these are the parameters that we took in series and these are the parameters that they provided in series and the fact that the FS is way 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 off 39 Hertz on our test tells me that these have got to be broken in specs so I'm going to break this in I'm just gonna skip the parallel I'm gonna break it in and uh, see if we get even close to this but you can see all of the numbers are way off and they're going to be way way off uh, just from not being broken in so all of these will change nothing to really compare about otherwise get it broken in check it again The excursion that you saw was maximum physical limits. Would not move anymore. Did that look like 56 millimeters, which if you do the math is over two inches? No, it did not. Was it closer to the say inch and a half? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Imagine that. So now we've got some break in time. Uh, maximum excursion for about 15 minutes. Uh, that should be pretty solid. We're gonna take specs one more time in series, see if it gets even close. with me thanks for hanging out make sure you shop emfcaraudio.com check out our new af line of amplifiers or swag six and a halves pre-order on the low ballers band hammer v2s all that good stuff and we've got this broken in we've got all the specs taken on it let's compare fs 34 hertz versus 32.7 minor discrepancy not awful but they also say 30 in parallel and we're testing in series so we'll check that and see if that actually happens uh, but then you've got Z min which I noticed over here would be seven ohms on a dual two how is that in the minimum I can see maybe if that was Z maximum which is the maximum impedance which was 55.9 which is nowhere near and Z min might be what should be the actual resistance if that's the case it's seven ohms which would be a dual four not a dual two and they make this in a dual two and a dual one so what are these specs from i'm starting to think they're not from this sub at all uh the vast so we've got 39 liters uh versus 26 liters which is 1.4 cubic feet, which is not 0.47, which is not either of those on the VAS either. And the VAS is going to be the suspension compliance. So the larger the number, the looser it's going to be. And the looser it is, the lower the FS. So this is saying that it doesn't have uh, the looseness for the FS that it says it is. It says it's stiffer, but the VAS says it's quite a bit looser. It's contradictory. Uh, then we go down to sensitivity as one of those things that you might look at. 86. So uh, it's actually slightly higher than they say it is here, which could be just a slight variance in that, as I had mentioned before. The moving mass we're showing is 231 grams versus 355. How is it that much different? It's crazy. Like I can see 
a small variation based on you know some of the criteria, but it's ridiculously different. I'm starting to think that these parameters don't go to this sub at all. And I might have to look and see if it coincides to anything else that they have because the seven ohms thing is kind of wary. And then even if you look at parallel, it says one ohm and then Z-min 2.5, which would also be a dual four coil. I think all of these specs go to a dual four ohm sub, not this dual two. That's bonkers. I'm gonna do this in parallel and see if we have the same kind of correlation of parameters changing that they're claiming change. I feel pretty confident that all of these specs don't actually match this sub at all from how wildly different they are down to the impedance to where they don't even make this in a dual four coil. got in series in parallel as tested we've got their series and parallel as they claim so how did they compare well between the two re was different because we wired between series and parallel different that should have happened fs 35 34 as we said uh in the second test it says it went up just a little bit they're saying it went down two hertz and neither of them are 34 or 35 they're saying 32 and 30 so uh, what else we got here? QTS 0.48 or 0.481 and 0.4763. So those are both very, very close on QTS. Where they were saying 0.36 and 0.33, so a larger variance on those. Sensitivity 86.96 and 86.64, which are very, very close. Like I said, there will be some small variance. And uh, they're saying 85.3, 85.7, so not much variance there. That is acceptable. Their moving mass was uh, off by uh, about 17 grams between the two. And here we've got 221 and 231, so we're 10 off there. So obviously we're reading pretty correctly. And back to the suspension thing, 39.00, 39.95, and they're saying two very different numbers, 26, 27, 31, 33. Neither of them are what we tested and both of ours are extremely close together. So this kind of proves that these specs don't match these specs that are tested from this sub. These specs don't go to this sub. You can't go off of these specs when looking at this sub to compare it to any other sub, the specs don't match. None of them match. x -Mac doesn't match, and the other stuff, not an exact match. This is bonkers. Why would you lie about the parameters on one of these, especially x -Mac, because you can verify as we did just by measuring the coil. So we're already pretty far into this, and I was gonna make this a two-part video, but you don't seem to like two-part videos. You want closure now. You also don't seem to watch both parts. For whatever reason, I don't know. You just don't. So then you ask questions or things that refer to the other video and it didn't work out. So this is all gonna be one giant video. So keep hanging on with me here. Now, I'll just do a quick recap because you probably went skip, 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 and you didn't actually watch the entire video up to this point. So here's what we've got. I measured the box, weighed it before I took it out of the box, and it was not right. The shipping weight was not right. The actual weight of the sub was not right. And before you go, well, your scale is just out of calibration. The numbers had a larger variance than was even printed between the box. So you can't even say that it just wasn't calibrated the same way. The weights were wrong. It's advertised as it weighs more than it actually does. The motor is advertised as weighing 15 pounds and advertising your motor weight is dumb anyway. 
but that means that 26 pounds is everything else. And even if you just flopped them from everything else, the numbers still aren't right because that would only make up for a few pounds between the basket. And that wasn't right either. The fail small parameters that they supply don't even go to that sub. Um, you might argue that different test equipment or whatever, but it listed impedance that would be for a dual four sub, not a dual two, and they only make it a dual two and a dual one. Not physically possible. The X max that they list on there is not physically possible. The coil isn't long enough to get that much X max. The spiders cannot support that much X max. The surround can, but I don't use that big of a surround on the low baller because it can't be used. It's just added mass, it's less efficient, and I hate it when you use things that aren't completely necessary, like putting a giant surround on a sub that can't actually move that much. That's a marketing ploy. It doesn't actually do anything. When you're looking at X Max, uh, even if you're looking at the spec, which we realize is wrong, so you can't go off of that, try to get a look at the coil length and figure out how long the coil is and how tall the top plate is, and that will kind of give you an idea of how much it can move. Also look at the spider size. Don't go off the X Max rating, look at the spider size. The spider has to accommodate it. Surround has to accommodate it. The coil length has to accommodate it. If all of those things accommodate it, cool, you're good. This is not one of those cases. So again, back to when you're comparing specs, look at the things that support the X Max to get to that conclusion. Does more X Max mean it's gonna be louder? No, it doesn't. But if that's what you're trying to figure out, it's something that you're looking for, that's what you should be looking for, is all of the other things. If they have this huge X-Max number and then small diameter spiders, it's not gonna move as much. Even if you have large spiders, big surround, short coil, not gonna move as much. Those are the things to actually look at. A reminder, don't look at sensitivity. That's not a measure of how loud it is. I know you might want to think it is, but I already proved that wrong in another video. And lastly, what we've covered so far with this sub is they don't know what color the coil is or what it's made of and possibly where it's made. At this point, who knows it's a total crapshoot. So in comparing our low baller 12, and I realize that this one is a 15 and not a 12 because the 12 is somewhere else where we will be doing the testing, we do actually have a copper coil. We advertise as a copper coil. It is a copper coil. How do I know that? Because I designed it and I know what I'm getting. The spider size is the same size as the Punisher. The Punisher has a placement for a larger landing. They're not using it. We're using the largest possible on this frame and it has the same spider. That's going to be a limiting factor in X Max. We rate this one for 19 millimeters. It actually goes 19 millimeters. How do we know? because we can look at the coil length, we can look at the top plate, we can look at the spiders, we can look at the surround, and the fact that I designed it. So I know what's happening there. I didn't point at a catalog and say, give me that and then tell me about it. All the parameters that I supply, I do the same way that I just tested the Punisher 12. So I know those specs, how they're taken, the conditions that they're taken in, and I can in turn give that to you. I'm not relying on a third party to tell me any of this information that may or may not be right and I know is actually for this sub. So I know what you're thinking. The low baller looks like a much smaller sub than the Punisher. Punisher costs the same money. Why would you get the low baller? The Punisher is rated for 1400 CEA, 2800 program, which should be RMS music, and 5600 peak, again, I don't rate peak. The original release of the low baller is rated for 750 watts RMS, and that's what we're going to test that at. At rated power, see if it fails under the same conditions. We're going to test the Punisher at 1400 and 2800 for a one minute tone, because they said you could do it. It'll do that, and it'll do all day. So we're gonna check that. We're going to check actual SPL in an SPL box that, again, may not be perfectly optimal uh, for either sub, but it's the same box using the same two subs, and we're gonna see how they actually compare in the real world. We'll also put it in a musical box that is actually too big for the low baller, but the correct size for the Punisher. So the Punisher has an advantage 
by being in the correct box. Well, too big for the low baller, just a little bit. And we are going to compare those results. So we can see in the real world, even though the Punisher has much higher power handling spec, physically looks bigger, has a three inch coil instead of a two and a half inch coil. Do they perform similar? Does one perform better than the other? Even though they are the same price and you apparently can't go off the specs anyway.